Well, hi folks, I'm going to go through my charts very quickly, show you what I've got on my screen. A couple of people ask me what's going on with gold, what's going on with yen, what's happening with natural gas and all that sort of thing. Commodities, forex, stocks, currencies, everything. So I thought I'd just quickly scan through the charts that I keep on my trading view sort of layout. And you can have a look at what I kind of do every day when I just scan through the charts. And I'll go through currencies. I've got the yen pairs particularly at the moment on some of the tabs. I've got the majors. I've got stocks and some of the stock names, indices. I've got gold and some other metals and natural gas and a couple of other commodities. And then the South African rand pairs. So I'll quickly scan through this and show you what I've kind of look at what I've got here on this first tab is the currency majors and I've got the euro and the pound against the dollar the dollar against the yen and the euro against the yen these markets are kind of stuck in the middle right now so I'm not going to go through all the trade setups you can have a look at my prior videos to see what I'm looking at on most of these currencies and commodities and stocks and so on they're all on my channel page Arcus FX where you are now and if you haven't subscribed to this channel it's probably a good time to do that now because I analyze currencies I analyze stocks stock indices stock names commodities and metals and things like natural gas and sugar and Bitcoin and all sorts of things. Let's just see what's going on in the majors. And generally, I don't really know where we stand on the euro and the pound, etc., against the dollar. In general, what the dollar is about to do. There's some idea in the market that the Fed isn't serious about continuing to raise rates. And we're not too sure what the European Union and the British government will do. And then other countries like Canada and Australia, some have raised rates early, some have continued, some have paused and then carried on raising. So we really don't know what countries are doing with rates. It's all up in the air right now. And the interest rate differentials between different countries has a big effect on the currency market. But that's not the only factor. There are all sorts of other economic factors which indicate the strength of the economy, which need to be brought into account as well. And those are all kind of up in the air. So we're in very mixed markets right now. Overall, I really don't know what the euro is going to do. This is the biggest currency of the euro and the yen. We've got some thoughts on the yen. But euro actually, I, I think, has a possibility of reaching up into this downward trend line. And I'm not going to go into details right now, and you'll see the same on the pound. But I think there's a strong possibility that we'll see further strength in the euro and the pound and further dollar weakness. Again, a lot of it depends on the relative strength of these economies and the interest rates that the central banks set for those countries. So, But I think the euro probably could reach up to about 1.16, 1.15. We'll have to see how that goes. And the same sort of thing for the pound. We've got a downward sloping trend line on the pound. We've also got an upward sloping trend line on the pound. So I don't know. I'm kind of not really in the major currencies very much at the moment. There's the downward sloping trend line on the pound and the upward sloping trend line on the pound. That's a sort of broader picture. And we're really stuck right in the middle. And one of the good adages that you can use in trading is don't diddle in the middle. And we're not only in between these two trend lines, we're also stuck in between these two support and resistance lines, literally right in the middle of them. So you couldn't get more in the middle than the pound is at the moment. I don't have any real view on it. And I think this has to be day traded. We do a lot of day trading in our community. If you're interested in joining our community, we use the MKT red line ghost signals for our day trading. These are short term AI driven trades based on money flows between different currency pairs. It's a very sophisticated piece of software, which allows us to get in and out of trades very quickly, and not have any general overview of where the market's likely to head. And that's probably the best approach to trading the major currencies at the moment. When it comes to dollar yen and the yen pairs in general, we'll have a look at some of the yen tabs a bit later on. Basically, this seems to be a line drawn in the sand by the Bank of Japan at either 142 yen to the dollar or 145, which is not far above us. So those are the two levels. We're just touching 142 now. And there's some sense and possibly even leakage that the Bank of Japan is starting to try and defend these levels, starting at 142 as perhaps the initial line in the sand and then 145. Expect that the dollar yen and the other yen pairs will come off eventually. Not so much the dollar yen, but the yen against the European countries and other currencies like the Australian dollar and the Canadian dollar, and that we should see these begin to move lower. So we've got these two defense lines at 142 and 145, so it seems, and we've got this rising trend line beneath us. I don't think the Bank of Japan, despite the inflation worries, both upside and downside, they don't want to see inflation below 2%, but they don't want to see it at 3.5% either. And they're trying to walk a sort of a tightrope balance between having very loose and low interest rates and inflation. And inflation seems to be winning at the moment. And uh, we should see the dollar yen dropping back into these lower levels down here, dragging the euro yen, the pound yen, the Aussie yen, the CAD yen, etc. Swiss franc yen all down with it. So basically my view on dollar yen and the other yen pairs is short. And here's the euro yen. Let's go across to the yen tab. These are the day charts for all the yen crosses. We've got the dollar yen, the euro yen, pound yen. Aussie yen, 
Swiss franc yen and CAD yen, and you can see they're all sort of blown out through the top. They're all approaching pretty key resistance levels, and we've got this threat from the Bank of Japan about intervention, either in their bond rate sort of range or direct currency intervention, or just through speaking, I suppose, by murmuring and mumbling about potentially controlling the yield curve and currency intervention and the sorts of words that they normally bring out when they want to control the, these exchange rates. So without going into detail, you can see I've got lines drawn at the top of all of these charts, which are pretty key resistance levels. CAD yen's actually just blown through this area here, but we've reached another key level. I could actually extend this range out. We actually need to take it up to that top there now and perhaps raise the bottom a wee bit as well. So something like that. And we're into a new resistance range and we're right at the top of it. So that's CAD yen, again, a key resistance level. So overall, I expect the yen pairs to come off. And when they do, they often do it fairly dramatically. And there's a capitulation of these long positions. And also, if the Fed doesn't actually continue to tighten rates, and potentially even, I don't expect this, but potentially even reduce interest rates this year, we should see some of that carry trade unwinding. So that's really what I see there. Then I go to the next tab. I've got all the same currencies, but on an hour chart. And I'm looking for obvious signs that these are going to turn around on the hour chart, break hourly structure. And I've got my G7 trading system set up on here. If you'd like a free copy of the G book, just go across to my website and uh, just put your name and email address in. I'll send you my trading system from about 20 years ago, which I wrote way back then, which I still use today. And so I've got the G7 chart set up here for all of the same yen pairs. And I'm looking for signals for further short positions on all of these. And also I'm looking for break of structure to use that much bandied about term on the hourly chart to indicate that we're possibly forming a top on these pairs. The next tab on here is four hour charts for the Forex majors. Here's the Euro, the Pound, Dollar Yen, Euro Yen. Euro Yen's not a major, but it's one of the ones that I trade quite frequently. And these are four hour charts. It's always useful to look at different time frames. So I've got daily charts, I've got four hourly charts, and I've got one hourly charts. I very seldom trade the shorter term charts. Having said that with the MKT Ghost Red Line system, it actually looks at one minute charts. I don't do it myself. I've got my friend Lee who operates that system and looks for entry signals on one minute charts. It's not really my thing. I use one hour, four hour and daily charts. These are my four hour charts. And sometimes on the four hour charts, you can see setups that you won't necessarily see on the daily chart. And the four hour charts also obviously give you a lot more time in between the rollovers from candle to candle, during which to consider how the market's moved and how it's set up, particularly looking for four hour reversal candles. So that's that. Then I've got my stock charts on here. I've got the NASDAQ and the S&P, and then some of the stocks that I like to follow. These are all tech stocks at the moment, AMD, NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft. I'm not going to go into that too much in detail, but I've got several videos on my feelings on the stock markets. Again, go and have a look on the channel. In the last week or two, I've done two or three videos on my views on the stock markets. Basically, we're looking for a top on the stock markets too, and uh, we're seeing some really good signs and signals on some of these charts indicating that we might just be there right now. We're looking for quite a strong pullback in the stock indices and individual stock names, particularly the overblown, overbought, hyped up, pumped up tech stocks, including the chip stocks like NVIDIA and AMD and some of the AI stocks as well. The next tab is metals, including uranium, which is actually a metal. And I've got gold, silver, copper, platinum, palladium, and uranium. I've got day charts for these. I'm basically looking for long positions on gold and silver and platinum and also uranium. And we've been in some of these trades already. Then we go across to the commodities chart, including Bitcoin, which is not really a commodity, but there's nowhere else for me to put it. It's a bit of a long-standing joke, the positioning on my Bitcoin chart, but it's got to go somewhere. It's not a stock. It's not a currency. It's not a commodity. So I've just put it onto the commodities tab because it fits there and I have an open space. So I've got Bitcoin. These are all day charts again. Natural gas. I've got two charts for natural gas. I've got the Henry Hub NYMEX chart, the day chart here. And then I've got the four-hour chart from my broker's feed. And again, if you're interested in my analysis and my thoughts on natural gas, I put videos up almost every day, perhaps every second or third day on natural gas. And I did one yesterday, which you can go and have a look on my channel. And I've got sugar and I've got Brent crude and WTI, the two oil names. Once again, these are day charts and actually I'm long on Brent crude and WTI at the moment. And finally, my last tab has two charts on it. That's the US dollar South African Rand and the pound South African Rand. This one's been a lot of fun to trade recently. I normally short the Rand against the dollar and the Rand against the pound. And I'm currently in a long trade US dollar against the South African Rand. And I'm looking for a long trade on the pound against the South African Rand. So those are all my tabs that I keep on my screen all the time. I've got multiple screens. There are some behind me here. And I've got a few on my desk right now. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, 
six screens. The sixth screen has MKT Redline Ghost on it and the MKT Risk Index Gauge. Put a link to the MKT Redline website up on the screen right now as we're talking. So there we go. So that's the RAND pairs, commodities including Bitcoin, metals, stock indices and stock names, and then the various currencies, the four hour charts, the one hour charts, the yen pairs, and the majors on the day charts. So that's it. Now you might want to set your charts up a little bit differently. You'd probably be trading different things on a different time frame, depending on the trading systems that you use. But I find it useful to use the TradingView charts. You've got to pay a little bit for it every month. You can get it for free. The free version has adverts popping up every now and then. And also you can only have one chart, I think, on the screen at any one time. With the pro version or whatever it's called, you can have multiple screens, multiple charts and run it across various computers as well. And these are fantastic charts. And I find it's useful to have several screens with different setups, diff different types of instruments, different time periods, and I can keep a view on it sort of surrounding me. I'm just surrounded by screens permanently, and that helps me to concentrate on my trading and focus on different things simultaneously without having to switch between charts on the same screen continuously. Well, I hope that's given you a good view of sort of what I'm looking at overall. I didn't go into specifics on this video. Just really wanted to show you what I'm looking at, some of the ideas that I've got in some of the trades and how I set up my charts to keep track of this vast variety of instruments that I'm trading. If you found it useful, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, as I said earlier, why not subscribe? Take care.